Hello there everybody and welcome to episode 21 of how to build an advanced 8-bit computer inside Minecraft. Sadly in this video we have some quite tedious and boring things to do, mainly revolving around busing. I know, I know, busing is uh, it's pretty boring but there's not really much I can do about it. So yeah, let's um, let's get on with it. So we have the outputs from our address register. The address register, if you can't remember holds whatever address of RAM we will be accessing. So say we've got a bit of data and we want to save it into uh, the location 30 of RAM, so RAM location 30. We set the address register to 30, and that which is this register here, and that can be either done through the ALU or we will ha actually have direct access into this register. And then after that we um, this then goes to like the decoder, the address decoder of the RAM, and it's and then we say write to that location, and the data itself will be whatever is coming out of this bus here, which is also coming out of the ALU. Well, the data which we saw store in RAM comes out of the ALU, but the address itself comes out of the address register. So one clock cycle, one cycle of the uh, of our program could set the address register 30 and then in the next clock cycle we could compute something say 5 plus 5 is 10 so then we could say save 10 which is the ALU output to address 30 which is stored in the address register 30 that is so yeah that's basically how that works in case you'd forgotten and what we're going to be doing is just bussing this over to the other side where our decoders will be so there's no real way, uh, there's no real right or wrong way of doing this. We can just uh, oop, bring it up like one here and then follow that around. So while I do this, I'm going to be talking about uh, what happened last week regarding the um, the uh, why I took so long to upload this video, and it was pretty stupid, really. I play on another server, a uh, yeah, well, a few other servers, really. I play Minecraft all mainly. The Voxel Box is like my secondary server where I do like building and architecture, and a Feed the Beast server. Um, and the Feed the Beast server is hosted by a friend called Michael or Dunkle Drash if you've ever met him in um, Minecraft. And he has his own launcher for his server. It's a Feed the Beast Ultimate server, I think. I think that's what it's based on. And it, um, it has a it had a bug in it, an old version of the launcher which I was still using and didn't realise had a bug in it which caused my um caused my dot minecraft to be deleted and that was pretty annoying but I yeah I raged pretty hard for that um but fortunately thanks to windows 7 uh, regular backups are taken I don't know if you realize but you can actually uh, if you right click on a file and click properties and then click previous versions I think um there are automatic updates of I think it's I don't think it's every file but I think it's like uh often used files and um, yeah, there was a previous version of only about three days ago which had been backed up, so I think I only lost three days work in the end. And nothing was lost uh, from this save, which I was really annoyed at, because I was thinking, am I going to have to build all this from hand again? And uh, that really annoyed me. Um, what I'm doing at the moment is just uh, putting redstone in all of this. Just, uh, oh gosh. No, 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 no. I didn't mean to do that at all. Just because uh, I'm too lazy to do it by hand, I can use World Edit to just stack it a few times. Like that. Obviously, it creates a bit of uh, <laughs> a few too many entities, but I will. Um, so, yeah, that's what happened with my dot Minecraft. Kind of stupid, but kind of not my fault. And uh, I've fixed that now by getting his updated version. <laughs> it's actually the second time that's happened. I think I mentioned it briefly in another video. But, um, yeah. Never again, hopefully. Stack that seven times. <coughs> right, so that's our bus coming along reasonably well. I'm going to change the wall colour because there's too much red. I'm not liking all this red. I'm probably going to make those orange. And I might do like this bus purple or something. I don't know. Ew, purple. That sounds kind of horrible, doesn't it? Clashing of colours. Oh well. Uh, I'm lazy again, so let's just <laughs> we'll edit this in. And there was also another reason which I just forgot to mention. I think I need to expand that once. And stack that six times. Ooh, if I could type. Stack six. Okay. 
There's also another reason why I failed to upload regularly the other day, like I said I would, and that was because of um, the 1.6.2 update. Uh, if you haven't got that yet, it's it's cool. It is really cool, actually. There's, I'm not really sure what they've added to Minecraft except horses, really. Um, but the launch is cool. I like the launch a lot. It's a lot more advanced than before. And um, well, they've actually updated it a second time since that update, so it's looking slightly different to when uh, when my Minecraft was dot Minecraft was deleted. But yeah, that's uh, another reason why I couldn't do these videos was. Um, and that's because single player commands hadn't uh, hadn't ported their thing forward yet, and actually they still haven't. There isn't a 1.6.2 uh, single player commands mod yet. I think it's 1.5.2, the latest one. And uh, something really nice which they included into the new Minecraft launch was the ability to use older versions. Now you can't use any version. You can't use like 1.4. They've started it at 1.5.1, I think. And yes, yeah, so you can use any version of that, which means you can mod. Uh, those versions as well so you could have like multiple Minecraft jars on the go at the same time and you don't have to manually keep swapping them which is what I used to have to do if I had different servers like the voxel box stays on one one version for a very long time due to just the complexity of all its mods whereas like Minecraft R updates pretty much as soon as possible like when the 1.5 came out it was like bam within an hour it updated like a few couple of restarts and uh, everyone's back on it again so yeah, that's um, that's pretty cool feature. So yeah, if you have a look, I'm actually running 1.5.2 at the moment with single player commands installed on this, but my 1.6.2 is actually clean. So yeah, it's really nice, really cool feature. Oh, and there's one more thing, and that was uh, that I wanted to wait for the Sawtax resource pack for 1.6.2. Um, but in the end, I didn't actually use 1.6.2. I used 1.5.2 for reasons I've just explained. So yeah, that's the bus done. We needed it to go over to here, and um, oh, decoders! I completely forgot about those. All right, I'm not going to expect you to build these by hand. I will provide you with schematic, and I know I've said I'm going to provide you with a lot of schematics that I never have done. I just don't get around to doing it. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a good holiday thing. Get updated on my schematics. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that's one bus done. We really need to kind of repeat it um, here. So, well, actually, this one isn't quite as hard. Basically, we need to take this input here and bus it to. Is it this one or is it this one? Um, actually, I don't think it matters really, does it? No, it doesn't. Wait, let's think about it. So, if we have, what, is this the MSB or the LSB? Alright, that's the overflow. So that must mean this this line here is 128 in binary. So if we have 128 here, we bust it to this input, and then the output of the RAM, which is all the way down here on the bottom, this output here then needs to be bust back into the registers. Oh, we can bust it from the other end. That's a good idea, actually. Um, so then you can read from RAM and save it back into a register. Good plan. Okay, so we need to do this now. Uh, yeah, is this gonna work? Please work. No, one too small. Um, hmm. Wait, there's not gonna be enough space. There is that. I need to do it on the other side, like uh, like this. Okay, so we can continue our busing jobs now, and I will think of something else to talk about while we bus. Um, oh yeah, okay. So before all the drama, <laughs> well not drama with uh, with the dot Minecraft, I um, I went on an expedition, and now you may be wondering what is this expedition? It sounds pretty fancy, and it was pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie, I enjoyed it a lot. Now it was an expedition for an award called the Duke of Edinburgh's Award which is an award given in England um, by the Duke of Edinburgh who's part of the royalty um, which awards you for doing multiple things there are three things, four things actually which you need to do uh, in order to get this award and they are some volunteering so giving up your time for like some community work or helping out somewhere else um, helping someone else other than yourself uh, a hobby which has to be like an interest something you do 
at least, I think it's two hours a week, or one hour a week, I'm not sure. Uh, that's not a sport, so like, I don't know, reading, I actually chose computing because it was a very easy one for me. I, uh, I'm on my computer, like, I don't know, depending on how much free time I've got up to like, like I don't know, the holidays, eight hours a day. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that was very easy for me. I just did programming and wrote a few programs, just some basic stuff like Java, because I'm, I'm getting pretty good at Java now. I know a fair few programming languages, like the syntax of them. So yeah, that was easy. And a sport, and um, I chose rugby. I could have chosen rugby, football, cricket. Probably could have chosen tennis if I could be bothered to play it that often, but not really my fancy anymore. So yeah, and uh, the fourth thing which you need to do is the expedition. Now the expedition is by far the best bit of the Duke of Edinburgh's award. It's a, um, it's a real good laugh, and you get to go somewhere, um, like in the mountainous regions mainly is where they do them. Now in England there's not that many mountain regions, there's pretty much only one with proper mountains, and that's the Lake District. So we went there for my expedition, and it was, uh, this expedition was like, I think it was four days, oh no, it was five days of which three was, um, there was three nights walking and two nights camping and we covered about 50 kilometers in three days and it was absolutely boiling. <laughs> the weather was, um, was ridiculous. So, uh, if you haven't realized, summer in England this year is, has been phenomenal so far. Don't want to curse it, but yeah, we've had um, an amazing summer so far and the weather was, was absolutely scorching. It probably wasn't the best conditions to walk in because uh, walking 50 kilometers in Burning heat is not the best. Everyone was feeling pretty, uh, pretty dehydrated and um, exhausted by the end of it. But you know, we had a good time, and I would rather it have been scorching hot than uh, than freezing cold. And uh, that's actually what happened. I had another expedition because there were um, there are three levels of the Duke of Edinburgh's award: there's bronze, silver, and gold. And bronze, and they just, um, the only difference is like the length of which you've got to do your four things. So like, you want to do six months volunteering for bronze, um, nine months I think for silver, and twelve months for gold, or something along those lines. And similarly with the expeditions, they, uh, it's two day expedition with one night camping for bronze, three day expedition with two nights camping for silver, and a four day expedition with three nights camping for gold. So yeah, um, my one in March was um, a bronze one. You have to do two, two per level, a practice and a uh, assessed. And this was my assessed bronze, and it was freezing. It was only one night camping, but it was like minus five at night, and uh, yeah, it was fairly chilly. <coughs> uh, yeah, so camping out in that was pretty uncomfortable. Uh, um, yeah, oh yeah, much preferred it being nice and hot this time. Although one of our teachers, um, they like they don't help you throughout the journey, but they uh, throughout the expedition, sorry, but they um, they come like check up at you, and you've got to keep in contact just so you don't get like horrendously lost in some wild country somewhere. And uh, one of the teachers came to our campsite, and she recommended that we pitched our tent in um, on like the slopiest bit of ground. And uh, I'm not gonna mention any names, but this teacher is fairly stubborn, and I uh, I didn't really want to argue with her just for the sake of arguing because I knew it was gonna be a it was going to be a pretty bad night's sleep on this slopey bit of ground, but we pitched it anywhere, and after pitching it, we just couldn't be bothered moving it, so we ended up pitching on about a 45 degree slope, so it was a, uh, it was pretty interesting, because we kept on falling to the bottom of our tent and rolling all over the place, and me and this lad uh, were pretty annoyed about that, but we didn't have the willpower or the energy to um, to re uh, to re-pitch re our tent, so um, yeah. We didn't get the best of night's sleep, but it was the um, it was the last night. It was the second night of the two nights, and uh, we felt pretty good that it was the final day of walking. <laughs> um, so we uh, it didn't really affect us in the end. All right then, so that's our um, that's our busing done. As you can see, if you're watching and not just listening to me talk, I've bussed each one of these lines above one of these, and we're gonna have torches on the side of these like that, and we are actually going to have to um, add an extra inverter in there, so it's. At the moment, there's a zero coming through here, and we're actually inputting a one. So we, somewhere along this line, we do need to add inverters, uh, which will add an extra tick. But there's no real other way of doing it, to be honest. And yeah, that's the busing done. So these eight here, well, actually only five of them will be used because um, we have five-bit addressing system due to our RAM only going up to 30, and uh, these actually the inputs to the RAM coming from the ALU output. So once again, we've made good progress. It's every—it's something which we had to do, even though it was a bit boring. But hopefully, uh, 
you've enjoyed catching up about what I've been doing recently. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. Please stick around for the next video.